Hey guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. Um, in today's video we're going to be doing a different setup so I've decided to put all my stuff in PowerPoint now just to see how this setup looks in comparison. So today we're going to be going over basically just integration by part. So integration by parts is a technique of integration where you basically get given a pretty tricky integral that you wouldn't know how to um, integrate. So for example if we wanted to integrate let's say um, natural log of x. Using standard techniques, we wouldn't be able to do this, but with integration by parts, this actually becomes quite easy. Um, another example of that is if you had, let's say, um, x uh, cos of x. This integral would be quite difficult to do on its own, but with integration by parts, it actually becomes very easy and we're able to complete that as well. So these will be the two integrals I'll be showing you how to do in this video. So let's just rub this out and go over to the next slide. So integration by parts has this specific formula. So what does this basically mean? Well, in other words, integration by parts is used when you have a function next to another function. So if you have a setup like this where you're integrating with respect to x, um, f of x multiplied by g of x. So what we basically label them, we label one of them we want to differentiate one of them, so we label one of them u, and we label the other one v. So basically we have to pick which one is going to be easier to differentiate and which one's going to be easier to integrate. So the way you pick it is basically you've got to pick the function that's going to basically disintegrate. Because in the formula here, let's say, alright, let's use an example. Let's say we had... Um, just trying to think of one that's not our example. Let's say you have the integral of x sine x, okay? So, how would we do this? Well, basically, you've got to pick which of these functions, either x or sine x, basically will give us a function that's really easy to integrate because in the formula here, we're going to have to pick, all right, one of these have to be is dv dx, so we're going to have to integrate one of these functions and the other one we're going to have to differentiate. So we have to pick one that's going to be easier. So if we were to pick, if we were to integrate or differentiate sine x, well, we know that it's like um, cyclic. So if you differentiate sine x, it'll turn into cos x. And if you differentiate cos x, that will turn into negative sine x. And if you differentiate that, that'll turn into negative cos x, etc. So you've got this wheel of circulation if you're differentiating. And if you're integrating, it's literally going the opposite way. So all these arrows go backwards if you're integrating. But with x here, if we were to, let's recall the power rule. So if we want to differentiate just a function x to the n, that's going to bring the n down the front and subtract the power by 1. So if we want to differentiate just x, this is going to disintegrate. What I mean by disintegrate is basically it's going to get rid of this variable because we have, um, excuse me, let me just move this bracket. We have x to the power of 1 up here. So we bring the 1 down the front. So we have 1 multiplied by x to the power of 1 minus 1. Now this is going to turn into 1 multiplied by x to the 0. And this is going to be 1 because any number a to the power of 0 will always equal to 1 because that's a law of... um. I think it's exponential laws or index laws, one of the two, but that's a law of math. So if we have this function here, we have um, the integral of x and sine x, we're going to pick x because it's going to give us something easier down the track. So what we do is basically, all right, we move this up here and then we go, all right, let u equal x and let uh, actually, no, we don't need let twice. Let u equals x and let dv dx equal sine x. So what we need now is we have this and that. We need now v and we need du dx because we already have that. Uh, we also And we also need v as well. So where we get du dx, we have to differentiate this function with respect to x. So we get 1. So... How are we going to do this one? We have to find v, so we have to integrate this function with respect to x. So, if we integrate sine x with respect to x, we're going to get negative cos x plus c. 
Well, in this formula, you don't have to include the plus C here because let's say you included the plus C here. When you integrate here, you're going to get another plus C. So what we do is basically we don't put the plus C with this um, little bit here because we're already accounting for it when we do this integral here. So we don't have to put the plus C here. Okay. So move that. And now we rewrite our formula. So if we're doing integration by parts, let's just um, make this a bit smaller so we have enough room. So integration by parts, we have the integral of x sine of x dx is equal to u multiplied by v. So this is our u and this is our, um, our v here. So we're going to have negative x cos of x minus the integral of v, which is negative. So we bring the negative out the front. That turns into plus plus cos x multiplied by du dx multiplied by 1. And oh, I forgot a dx up here in the formula. dx. Now you can see this function here is quite easy to integrate. So the integral of cos is going to give us sine. So we can replace this whole thing here with just plus sine of x plus c. And that is the integral of x multiplied by sine x dx. So this was a little example using the formula. Let's have another go at a different one. Well, one that's very similar. So if you're feeling confident, I want you to pause this video and have a go at this problem here, and then I'll get to solving it. Okay, first off, I like to write out my formula before I have a go. So the integral of u dv dx is equal to uv minus the integral of v du dx, okay? So, I've got to pick which function is going to give us something easier here. So, the way I go is basically I pick the function that's going to disintegrate first. So, cos is cyclic, this here isn't. So, if we differentiated that, that's going to give us 1. So, that's going to be useful. So, straight off the back, I'm going to let u equal x. So, let u equal x, and then I'm going to let dv dx equal cos of x. Okay, so therefore du dx is going to be equal to 1. If we integrate cos, it's going to give us sine, so we have v is equal to sine of x, and we don't include the plus c because we're going to count that 4 down here. So therefore now we write is, alright, the integral of x cos of x dx is equal to u times v, so x sine of x minus the integral of v, which is sine x, multiplied by du dx, which is 1, dx. I can bring um, the negative sign inside here, so that gives us the integral of negative sign. Now, the reason I wanted to do that is because the integral of negative sign is going to be cos x, isn't it? So I can replace this entire thing here with just cos x plus c. And then, so this entire thing here is equal to that. Right, right. so uh, before you knew integration by parts, this would have been basically impossible to integrate. But now with this simple rule, it becomes quite easy because all you got to do is, all right, the hardest choice here is picking which one you want to integrate and which one you want to, um, uh, sorry, the one you want to um, differentiate and the one you want to integrate, okay? Now, we're going to do one more example in this video, which is quite cool. So, we're going to try and evaluate this integral, the natural log of x with respect to x. So, if you're feeling confident, pause the video and have a go at this. All right, so straight off the back, I'm going to write out my formula. So, integral of u dv dx is equal to uv minus the integral of v du dx, okay? So, you're probably thinking, how are you supposed to do integration by parts on this thing, okay? What is my u and what's my dv? Well, we do this little trick here with the natural log. All right, so the integral of the natural log is the same as 1 times the natural log of x, isn't it? And you can see, all right, we don't know how to integrate natural log of x because that's what we're trying to do. So, straight off the back, we let this 
u equal natural log, okay? And then, therefore, this here must be our dv dx, must be equal to 1. So it's quite a weird trick, but it works. So um, we'll keep the red there. So if we were to integrate 1, that's going to give us x. So v is equal to x, no constant, because we're going to account for that later. If we we know how to differentiate the natural log, that's going to be, so du over dx is going to be 1 over x. Okay. So our integral of natural log of x dx is going to be equal to u times v. So x natural log of x minus the integral of which one's v, which is x multiplied by du dx. So we'll multiply these two. So we have 1 over x dx. Now you can see this is going to cancel with that. So what we have here is x log of x minus the integral of 1 dx. If you integrate 1, you're just going to get x. So what we're left with is x log of x minus x plus c is equal to the integral of natural log with respect to x. All right, cool. Um, thank you for watching the video. If you learned something and you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and share with others.